Seth, we like talking about these very abstract topics of existence at uh, our FQXI conference, where we are here in Banff. Uh, we've talked in the past about time and information, multiverse, multiple universes, this time about observers in physics and quantum mechanics and events, and these seem very abstract. If, you, if we look f forward into the future, uh, not just 10 years or 50 years, but 100 years or 1,000 years, what could be the importance and the meaning of what we're doing today in this seemingly abstract intellectual exercise? <laughs> well, I think we'll find in the future that most of it was just a bunch of BS. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, some of it will not be. And the some of it that is not will be very important. Um, you know, one of the most remarkable things that can happen to science is it becomes engineering. Uh, right? I mean, if you look at, at quantum mechanics, you know, quantum mechanics of electrons and matter became um, the understanding of semiconductors, which became the creation of semiconductor amplifiers, of digital computers, which gave rise to a whole host of things that we would never ever have believed could have happened 50 your, years your, ago. Your smartphone, which is more powerful than a Cray computer in the 1970s. So. Yes, and in fact, <laughs> capable of, of, of even bigger stupidity. Yeah. Remember, one of the main things about artificial intelligence is it leads to real stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that we're going to see um, things that we would never thought have an application from this kind of pure science that we're doing right now might actually have actual engineering applications in the future. We don't know what those are going to be, but they're likely to transform the way that we live as human beings. Uh, can you imagine what those could be? I mean, we're talking about uh, cyborgs and integration with ro robots and not in, and, and non-biological intelligences that are merged with ourselves. I mean, what what is there and are we disturbing what it means to be human? Yeah, well, I, I can't predict the things I have no notion <laughs> about, but some things that you can extrapolate about are, you know, as um, our computers and smartphones become more powerful and as we get more sophisticated in programming them, using, for example, machine learning techniques, then they're going to behave in ways that are much more human. I mean, they already are behaving ways that are very human. I think one of the most human things a computer can do is really mess with your brain in a yeah. truly unexpected fashion, yeah. and computers are doing more and more of that. I think it's, it's quite likely that... Um, there's a long debate about whether machines can be intelligent, whether they can be conscious. I actually think this debate is in some sense irrelevant because what's going likely to happen is that as they become more smart, better learning of what's going on with us, better interacting with us, we will simply treat them as conscious beings. You know, it's not it's, once somebody says, hey, don't turn off my smartphone. It's got some thinking and dreaming to do. You know, at that point, it doesn't matter whether it's conscious or not. We're treating them as conscious. And, and, and what would be the impact on, uh, uh, on humanity if, when that happens? Oh, well, we'll have a new friend. <laughs> Is that good or bad? <clears throat> Um, it could be good, it could be bad. And one of the, actually, uh, there's a, a, a current bunch of loose talk that <clears throat> from people like uh, Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk is that computers are going to take over the world and artificial, malign artificial intelligence will destroy humanity. I, I think this is just silly. I mean, um, what's, first of all, we're way away from that right now. And rather, rather simple precautions will prevent it from happening. Um, and also really, you know, as computers get more powerful, they actually get more human in their ability to not understand what's going on, to fail to comprehend what's happening. What about beyond the engineering? What about the, the, the sense of, uh, of, of human existence in the great cosmos? So are, will we get to a point where we really understand more than we do now, or, or will the awe and mystery continue to get deeper? Oh, I, I don't think, you know, human beings have not changed a lot in the last 100,000 years from their genetic makeup and the way we're thinking about things. I don't think things are going to change that much. And actually, in some sense, you know, technology just provides distractions. It's not, not clear that someone who walks around with their phone like this is leading a more spiritual existence than someone who walks around taking in the beautiful water, the sun, the mountains. And in fact, I think quite the opposite.